Now today we're showing you how I ship these items, how I make 50 to 100 bucks easily on really cheap bulk lots of these. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about shipping bulk lots of records. Now I'm going to show you 78s for an example here because these are the hardest to ship for most people. But if you know how, you can make a lot of money selling these. We sell these in bulk lots. This is actually 20 records right here, about 10 pounds worth of records. Now most people don't mess with them. These are something too that I can get for almost nothing because most people haven't a clue on the records. If you're able to do the most basic basic sorting of these, you can split them up into lots of genre, jazz music together, rock, blues, country, whatever the case may be, and sell them that way. You can also easily sell them by the same artist. A whole bunch of Bing Crosby, a whole bunch of Andrews Sisters, a whole bunch of Glenn Miller, or going back farther to like Fats Waller or someone like that. A lot of the same artist sells just as well as one from a specific genre. Now I also get these in big lots, a couple thousand at a time, and I'm usually paying a nickel or 10 cents a piece and I can turn that nickel or 10 cents into three bucks a pop selling them in lots so I never just ship one record for us the record has to be worth at least 1999 for me to even want to list it because of the time packing it it takes a couple minutes to pack a record if you haven't done it before if you've done it before three or four minutes you can pack almost any record fairly quickly with a lot it's about five minutes or so just takes a few extra moments to pack a lot. There's a lot of money to be made in selling these sorts, these common discs. You won't get a ton of money for each one, but when you sell them in lots, that's where the value comes from them. They're cheap because no one wants to mess with them. Now, one misconception here a lot is that it's far more dangerous to ship these in big lots. That's honestly not the case. I find it far safer and far easier to ship in big lots because the records themselves are, are thick together. They're harder to bend. They're not going to break when there's a whole bunch of them stacked up firmly against each other. So in all honesty, it's far safer to ship them in lots. Now, a large chunk of the 78s we run into aren't worth a ton of money. 10% though, we get some really good money, a couple hundred bucks a disc in many cases. But the other 90, 95%, you can bulk lot out and make some really good money. And that goes for any type of record that you sell. We sell 45s the exact same way. I sell lots of 45s of 125 discs quite often. They sell within the first week. I list them as an auction when I'm doing lots usually. The list price is what I want out of them. So if I at least get that, I'm fine and happy. Usually they go for more than that. 78s, many times I may put them up as a bid, a high price bid, because there's no price comparison to any lots like I'll be selling. So I can afford to put a higher price on them than I expect to get out of them, and then I've got some wiggle room. That's how I make at least 50 bucks or better profit on a lot just like this one here. So now a lot of people don't mess with 78s. They don't know what to do with them. Or they buy a whole bunch of them and they're just not worth a whole bunch of money. It's not worth shipping individual records like this if they're only worth 5, 10, 15 bucks. I don't even list one unless I should get 20 bucks for it these days just because of the time to ship them. Now this is actually a lot of 20 of them. They sell well in lots because a lot like this I can on average get two or three bucks a disc for no matter what. So if I put a lot up, I'm getting 50 bucks almost back in profit. Again, it depends on what you pay for the records. Now when I'm doing these in bulk, I'm doing like to like items. So they're all jazz from the same time frame or they're all jazz on the same label or they're all the same performer, Bing Crosby, um, Andrew Sisters or something like that, whatever the case may be, or say they're all pre-war jazz. They have to have something in common. You don't want to mix up a whole bunch of different discs from different eras or anything else like that. It just won't sell. You can sell all rock and roll, all garage 78s, R&B 78s, or at least soul, whatever the case may be. You have to sell them in a lot to do best in them together, like all country, all blues, all jazz. It doesn't work much any other way for us. Now, I use a lot of free eBay packing material. To get it free, you have to have a store. You have to have a certain store level. Some get $25, I think. Some get $75. And with an anchor store like us, we get $150 worth of free supplies every three months per anchor store. If you're not big into 78s, you probably won't have sleeves for them. You don't need to have sleeves. I take these. If you don't have sleeves or you're sending them out in big bulk, fold one of these eBay sheets again. These are from eBay. 
These are the tissue paper sheets. They're fairly large. I'm not really sure on the size, but I think they come in boxes of 250 sheets. So you can get quite a bit of them. You can use these right here. In fact, let's just get these out of the way so there's no uh, nothing in the way. So just put it down. First one goes like this. Next one gets folded over like this. Next one goes on top. The tissue paper works great. So if I want to keep continuing stacking some, fold another one in half. Just like that. It sits on the top. You just put another one on top. Obviously some of these have sleeves in them. If they have sleeves, you don't have to do this. I'm just giving you an example of the best way to do this. I never send 78s when they're touching, so the grooves can't touch. There's nothing in between that could scratch anything. That way they're going to be protected for their journey. Once they're all stacked up and separated with the sheets or if they're in sleeves, I'll make sure they all line up correctly. A careful way to do that is very carefully grab them up and just let them set like this and then put your hands on the sides. So it's pretty solid there. Then I've got these bags. I use these bags for, gosh, so many different things. These are 11 by 17 bags. They're one mil bags. They're honestly, I get them in big bulk lots, five, ten thousand 10,000 to get them dirt cheap. The only way I can get these dirt cheap is if I'm buying mass quantity. I use them. I use them for so many different things. So for us, it's fine. Again, they're 11 by 17, one mil. Whoever has them the cheapest is who I buy them from. These fit very nicely in here. I don't ship more than, say, 25 of these out in one box, these 78s. So on average, I'll usually just do a 20-disc lot, 20 different 78s. Let me get my handy-dandy tape dispenser here. This is honestly my favorite tape dispenser. I got links to this because I've had people ask me so many times what type of tape dispenser you have. Uh, it's a U-Line. I actually have a whole bunch of these. I love these things. I use them all over the place. They also come in three inch ones too. So you can get a three inch tabletop one. Now when I'm wrapping these up from here, I slide them to the edge of the table and I use the tape's force to make sure again that they are lined up correctly. The more tape you get on them, the more stable they will be. You have to make sure the tape goes all the way around them. You don't want anything sliding. So now we're just going to do it in the other direction. You need to make sure we crisscross everything. And I always tape up where the seam was, where I closed the bag. Now in four or five minutes, I can pretty much ship out anything. Um, we've shipped out probably a couple hundred thousand items in the last few years. So we ship a lot of stuff. It's not hard when you've done it quite often. First time, it may take you a little bit longer. Now I usually double bag these. It's an extra step. You don't have to do it, but I always do it and I would recommend you doing it as well. And just use the tape dispenser. I don't tape this last one up as much here. I just want a secondary layer on it. I do crisscross again. Now some of the protection in these is the fact that there's so many of them together and they're uh, closely packed in there so they can't be bent. That's a big factor. In some cases it's almost safer to ship a couple 78s than it is just to ship one because one is more fragile than a couple stacked up together. Now I box these all and I use the eBay boxes these days. These are 12 by 12 by 12 boxes ordered from eBay, the free boxes I use. I wouldn't buy them from eBay. You'll get probably the same exact box locally from a local box manufacturer, same size for probably around 30 or 40 cents less a box if you buy them 200, 250 at a time. eBay is including shipping for free, but it's included in the price, so keep that in mind. Don't order them unless it is honestly the cheapest you can find, or again, they're free. Now, I cut these up. A box is four panels. I cut this up into four sections. So these are the four sections. Each one is one side of the box, and I use these to actually fold around the stack of records right here. Basically the same thing that I do for packing one single one, but I use more cardboard.
Now I do cut these cardboards down. I do remove a small section so that they fit inside the box. You're gonna need to cut down just a couple of them. It's really easy to cut down a sheet of this cardboard here. All you're doing is run a line with the grooves. Just get the knife in there. And it goes right on down and stays in that groove. You fold it just like that. Then we take the cardboard. We use one of the folds. Fold it right up to that line there. Again, these can just be zipped down. Fold it in. Same thing here. The weight of the actual records will allow you to fold it pretty easily. In fact, when you do it this way too, it folds pretty darn close to where you want it. As you can see, it's pretty darn close. I don't even need to cut or do anything else. I have this table here so I can just slide it around if need be. That way I don't have to pick it up all the time if that's so be what you want to do. So that's the first one. I do four sides, so I use two boxes to ship a lot of these. Again, these are free boxes. If you had to buy them, it would be about $1.40. You just add that into your shipping costs so that the buyer pays for that if you want. You can do a shipping and handling fee on any of these sorts of things. So again, we just zip it back on over, fold it over, and I just build it up this way just like that, and this is gonna get bopped into a big box from here. And one more piece of cardboard. Again, I'm doing extra care with this. Some people only put two single sheets of cardboard on it. Some people may just put a couple sheets on the top and not worry about the sides. But I like to basically double, triple box, whatever it takes to get this to the customer. Usually if I'm selling a lot of 20 records, I'm probably making 50 or 60 bucks bare bones minimum on those lots. I generally, if I sell say six records, I'm making 25 bucks profit off of that because they're more tied to a specific person. If you know how to make money doing bulk lots of these, there's a lot to be made because most people don't mess with 78s unless they think they can make a ton of money off of just one or two. Most people don't like messing with lots of these at all. So I can really break out. I can get them for almost nothing. Many times when I buy a big lot of 78s, the most I spend is say five or 10 cents a disc if I'm buying a couple thousand of them. So that is about it. We just need to seal this up here. Once you get one piece of tape on one side, it's pretty quick and easy from there. Zap it up there. Now this part is all set. This just needs to go into a box with some cushion around it and it's done. So I just take another box here, another 12 by 12 by 12. I just tape it up. Make sure you're getting at least four inches or better of tape in both directions. Make a crisscross. So four inches this way, four inches this way. I tape up all the edges. So one piece of tape here, one piece of tape here. So none of the flaps are going to move or anything else like that. If you have a three inch one, which we do as well, you can just run a couple three inch sheets of tape across these in both directions. Should form a plus sign with tape. Then I literally take some more of the eBay tissue paper here and start stuffing it in the box. So I go ahead and get a layer on the bottom, and then I go ahead and put this inside of it. Now this box is 12 inches tall. The item is four, so you want four inches on the bottom of this in tissue paper and four inches on the top, just like I got right here. I just shove some tissue paper around the edges here as well so it can't slide around. It as well protects the item inside here. If somebody knees it or hits the box, it's not gonna get to the actual inside section. It's gonna have the little cushion air pocket of tissue paper. So now I've got tissue paper stuffed all the way around it. The box is safe inside. It's not going anywhere. I just have to fill the top up right here with more tissue paper. You want it stuffed all the way up to the top. Then you just need to close it and we're going to tape it up. Now here it is all sealed. Now if you did it right, this thing shouldn't move if you turn the box around. It should stay in the same spot. There shouldn't be any room inside there for that internal box with the 20 records to move around in there. 
That cushioning is what's going to protect it. Now you can ship china or anything delicate the exact same way I just showed you here. Make a box around it on the inside, double, triple cardboard, whatever it takes to get that fragile item there. It's worth the extra effort. Now, if you've done this before, it's really quick. It's really quick just to zip up a couple boxes, cut them in the four sides, wrap them around the records, and then stuff some paper in here. I mean, there's not much to it once you've done it a few times. It'll be a piece of cake. It's speedy. It's quick. These sell incredibly well when you sell them in lots. If we can't sell them individually, but yet they're still worth a couple of bucks, we always do this route for them. For us, it's an easy 50, 60, 75, even 100 bucks in many cases when we sell them in lots like this. Now I've got my handy dandy scale out here to give you an idea on the total pack weight of 20 records packed the way I'm showing you. So 20 records, double box, extra cardboard, extra tissue, a big box that's going in here as well is just under 12 pounds. Now I don't ship these any other rate, so this is media rate of course we're talking about here. If somebody asks to go a different route, that's fine, they're paying the difference. But this box here should ship for less than 10 bucks. That's why it's a good deal for somebody when they buy a lot of 2078s online. Same thing goes with 45s or LPs. You can sell tons of lots of these on eBay without any problem. 45s are even easier. I can put 125 45s in one of these boxes here and still get in with the weight, ship it, and I can actually even lower the size of the box and cut out some of the cardboard and still get them all in here. Now, if you're going to ship LPs, you just need a 14-inch cube box, and you can ship 55 pounds worth in a 14 inch cube box 55 pounds worth of 12 inch LP so selling these in bulk is honestly not that hard of a deal you can make a ton of money doing it 78s are usually the hardest to pack but if you know how to do it like I'm showing you here you can do phenomenally well blowing out a bunch of these and still making a darn good profit well there we have it hopefully that gave you some ideas some thoughts if you enjoyed this video please hit that like button down below you can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live, subscribe, and tell all your friends. gift online and we really need to do something with it. I'm just not sure what. What is it? Well, just return it. Returning gifts is easier than ever with priority mail flat rate boxes from the Postal Service. If it fits, it ships anywhere in the country for a low flat rate. Plus, I can pick it up for free. Perfect, because we have to get that out of this house. Come on, it's not that big. Oh yeah, that's got to go. Priority mail flat rate shipping starts at $4.95, only from the Postal Service. A simpler way to ship and return.